name is Sandra Hancock and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our show. Now our show today was actually filmed in Laurel at one of our conferences and it's part two of our message from last week called All Things Are Possible. We still serve a miracle work in God, but we talked last week about how we need to put feet to our faith because faith is action. Faith is doing all we know to do and then standing and let God be God in our lives. We also talked about Nehemiah and we talked about how he built the wall and how we need to build some walls back in our lives because we've come, become slack sometimes and we let the enemy come in and attack us. So whatever you need from the Lord, I want you to increase your faith that you know what, I'm going to receive my miracle during this show. May God bless you and enjoy this show. And you have to confront some issues sometimes and say, you know what, you're not going to have my joy. This is not going to be a hindrance. You're not going to do this anymore in my life. I'm taking a stand and I'm going to keep unity and we're going to do what we need to do. So at that point, that issue was resolved. Well, the enemy, how many of you know the enemy's not going to start with one thing? If he don't get you with one thing, he'll try something else. He'll try with your family. He'll try with your health. He'll try with your finances. He wants to do whatever he can to keep you defeated and depressed. So the next attack that they had was a place called Ono. Oh Y'all say, oh no, oh no. There was these men that tried to trick Nehemiah to go to a town seven miles from Jerusalem called Ono. Oh but you know what, he was smart. And he said, oh no, I know what y'all are up to. I'm not gonna go there. And when you start building your temple back or your wall back, you got to stay away from oh no. What is your oh no? Now, I'm not sure that's the way you pronounce it, but I like the way that sounded. It's O-N-O. -O. I thought oh no sounds pretty good. <laughs> so I thought that sounded good. Y'all would understand that, wouldn't you? But anyway, what is your oh no? You know, is it unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart? Because let me tell you, when you walk around with unforgiveness and bitterness, it opens a door for the enemy in your life. It opens a door for the enemy for sickness in your body, and we could go depression and discouragement. So your oh no may be unforgiveness. Your oh no may be sin. What is your, you know, what are you doing? Disobedience. Your oh no may be your past. And see, the problem is you're trying to go back to oh no. You're trying to go to the places you used to go. You're trying to hang with people that God had pulled you away from. And that is an oh no in your life. In fact, what happened, it opened the doors for the enemy to come in in the first place. You got to have your mind made up. I'm not crawling back into the pit that God has pulled me out of. Amen? Because there will be people, there will be good people that are trying to take, come on, let me take you to oh no. Come on, let me take you here to, oh no. It won't matter. It won't matter what people say. It won't hurt. Come on, let's go to, oh no, together. You have to be careful about what you watch and what you listen to. I know I sound like a re religious fanatic, and I am. Praise God, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it wholeheartedly, amen. I'm not gonna halfway do anything. <laughs> My sons, they said, mama, all she watches is Hallmark. And, and TBN, Weather Channel and the news. But you know what? That's what I like. Because you know what? I can't go to oh no. I know the call of God on my life. And I know to walk in the anointing that God has put in my life, I can't go to oh no. I can't go to oh no. I don't want to go to oh no. Because see, all of you are here today wanting to hear a fresh word from the Lord. God didn't call me to be a motivational speaker. Y'all say, like, praise God. I could probably motivate you, maybe. 
but your life wouldn't be changed because you know what? It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's going to destroy yokes and bondages in your life. And we need people ministering over the, with the anointing of God because I can encourage you all day long, but sometimes you got to tell people, get away from oh no. Stay away from oh no. God has something special for you. Because the anointing is what destroys yokes and bondages in your life. One generation's compromise leads to the next generation's bondage. See, the enemy knows if there's a, a family history of alcohol, have you ever noticed how there's generational curses in families? Alcoholics, alcoholics, alcoholics. Abuse, abuse, abuse. Somebody's got to draw the line and say it stops here. Amen. Satan, you may have destroyed everybody else in my family, but it stops here. You will not come across this line because the blood of Jesus, we're in a war and the blood of Jesus covers us. And I tell you, there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in his name. There's power in his word. The enemy has to flee with the name of Jesus. And when you start speaking the blood, the devil's gotta flee. And you know, a lot of places today are trying to take the blood of Jesus out of sermons. They're taking blood of Jesus out of hymns because it offends people. Well, let me tell you, if you don't have the blood, you don't have the gospel because it's all about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus can change you. The blood of Jesus can set you free. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. We serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. And we gotta, we gotta quit limiting God. Because I believe we're gonna see more miracles, signs, and wonders than ever before. And we're seeing them in this ministry. And we're gonna see more and more. And he's gonna use ordinary people like us to do extraordinary works. Why? It's not about stardom. It's not about numbers. It's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Well, after that point, after he wouldn't go to Ono, y'all gonna remember that Ono, aren't you? When y'all trying to get that dessert today, you gonna say, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Can't have that, oh no. Hi, my name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to invite you to get your ladies groups together, get your friends together, and join us for our annual Faith Explosion Ladies Conference. Ladies, you don't want to miss this one. We are so blessed to have some powerful speakers this year. We're going to have uh, Hannah Hopkins from Lifting You Higher TV Ministries ministering with us that day. We're gonna have Pastor Cheryl Langford, who is the pastor of Cheryl Langford Ministries in Buckatana, Mississippi, such a powerful woman of God. And we're also gonna have Pastor Hannah Cowling from Community Missions in Lewin, Mississippi, in the house that day, along with myself. So like I said, don't you dare miss this event. Now it will be October the 8th, Saturday, October the 8th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m at the gathering place, which is 3227 Audubon Drive in Laurel. Admission is always free. Now, if you want more information about this conference, visit our website, sandrahancock.org, or call us at 1-800-579-7350. But anyway, you know what? Thank the Lord for his convicting power. You know, conviction brings us closer to Jesus. Condemnation takes us away from Jesus. And I always want to have my heart tender that he can speak to me. And he speaks to me all the time. He whips up on me all the time. And I'm sure none of you ever get a whipping from the Lord. Y'all so holy. But you know what? His goodness and mercy is new every day. Well, after he couldn't get him to oh no, let me tell you, these 
people, these leaders, were so jealous. And they were talking about his back, talking about him behind his back, telling lies on him, anything they could, because it made them so mad that this wall was being built back. But you know what? Nehemiah wouldn't stop. He kept building. But the next trick they tried is they took priests. Priests, men of God, hired Tobiah and uh, what was that other one's name? Somebody else help me out here. Sandbow, there you go. To try to get him to the temple. Tried to scare him into the temple. See, if they could scare him into the temple, it would be like he lost his anointing. He would look like a failure to his people. But he said, uh-uh. I'm not gonna, I've had to work this long and this hard to run and hide now. I have built and I'm gonna continue to build. I'm not gonna run anywhere. I'm gonna run and do what God has called me to do and we're gonna finish this project. So when you are building your wall back, God will use good people sometimes to put fear in you. Fear to keep you from doing what you know God in your heart has told you to do. And you know, the time is now for us to do something. And there's people, you know, you're waiting to be ordained, you're waiting to be like, and that's all wonderful and that's good. But you know what? Now's the time to go minister to people at Walmart. <laughs> Now's the time to minister to people in your neighborhood and in your family. Some people are waiting and waiting and waiting when God say, do it now. Put feet to your faith. There's people that's lost. They need Jesus now. Amen. But see, even with us and, and our fear, so many people have been hurt. We're in our own little temple. We've been hurt by people. Some people have been hurt by church. Let me tell you, you don't get hurt by church. You get hurt by church people. <laughs> it's the difference. Because the church of the living God is holy and it's love. But sometimes they got a bad PR department. <laughs> Some Christians. They're not here today. We'll talk about them. They mean as a snake. And call them and will shout on Sunday morning. And will dance a dance all over the place. And pat you on the back and stab you in the back. And I know everybody's thinking of somebody right now. <laughs> but you know what? People are everywhere. You can't get away from them. And sometimes you have built a wall around yourself to say, I'm not going to go be around people anymore because I don't want to be hurt. You got to let that wall down so you can go out of your own little temple and be around people. Because let's face it, if you don't, if you don't get, want to get around anybody, you can't lead nobody to Jesus. Letting those walls. Don't let fear keep you in your comfort zone. See, fear will keep you from doing what God's called you to do. Fear can lead to depression, and depression can put you in a pit that you feel like you can't get out of. Amen. Have you been there before? But 2 Timothy 1, says, 1 7 says that the Lord doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. So don't let fear put you on the run. You know, a lot of people, they're running from place to place to place. But you know what? You are wherever you go. You can't get away from you. <laughs> and if you got problems here, you're probably going to have problems there. Just enjoy the journey. Do what you're supposed to do. Be filled with his presence and the love of the Lord. Nehemiah built that wall back in 52 days, which was a miracle. This was an ordinary man who had a passion for God. So don't let the enemy tell you you know what, I'm insignificant, I can't do anything. If you've got a passion and a love for people, God can use you. Amen. He's just looking for obedient people that are just willing to do what he's asking you to do. Amen. To put feet to your faith. How do we build this wall back? 
it starts with repentance. You got to get real to be healed. And we are telling people now, there's so many people, they're never taught to repent. We're leading them in a prayer and they don't even repent. But their true repentance is saying, Lord, I'm sorry. But it doesn't mean that you're going to turn around and do it the next day. I'm going to repent tonight and I'm, I mean, I'm going to do it tonight and, for, and repent tomorrow. It means you're doing your best. But you know what? His goodness and his mercy is new every day. Because that's what the blood of Jesus is all about. He knew we were going to mess up. He knew we hadn't arrived yet. So when he died on the cross, not only was it our sins from the past, but he knew we were going we were gonna to blow it. And his mercy and his grace is new every day. But it starts with repentance. It starts with uh, forgiving people. And once we are obedient and we do what God's called us to do, and we plead the blood of Jesus, that wall is built back. But you got to do your part. It's not going to be built back without war. If you think the enemy is just going to sit around and let you walk in victory, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Because the greater the call of God on your life, and you're all here today and you're in ministry of some form or fashion or your leaders, the attacks will come. And it isn't a war for mealy mouse little Christians. It's for Christians that have power and authority that walk our talk. The world is looking for real. They're tired of fakes. They're tired of phonies. They're looking for a real God. They're looking for real Christians who, who believe what the word of God says. They believe in laying on of hands. They believe in miracle signs and wonders. That's what this world is looking for. He's looking for people like you, ordinary people, to go out of there and lay hands on the sick, to lead people to Jesus, to encourage people, to show people the love of the living God. Building our walls back. All things are possible with God. As he told me earlier, he can make those impossible situations possible just like that. But it starts with getting real. I pray you were blessed by that message. I know I was, and I was there, and I'm just energized again and empowered by hearing it again. But you know what? I would encourage all of you. You know, all things are possible. Don't you dare give up. Some of you have got some impossible situations in your life, but don't you dare give up in the middle of your miracle. I encourage you to put the feet to your faith, and by all means, stay away from where? Stay away from oh no. And you know what your oh no is in your life if you watch this show. Because the enemy wants to trick you and he wants you to quit and he wants you to be discouraged. But oh no, my friend, you're going to the next level because all things are possible to those who believe. And God has great plans for you. Right now, there's a special segment of this show that's called Hope is on the Way. And this just shows us what a miracle-working, supernatural God we serve. So I want you to enjoy this part, but don't you go away. I want you to come back so we can pray with you before the show ends today. Well, hey, my name is Tracy, and my husband and I are blessed to have two children. We have a son, Oliver, who's six, and we have a daughter, Willow, who is two. And um, we kind of chose to stick with tree names as our theme, I guess you could say. Um, when I was pregnant with our second child, we were trying to think of names, and we were like, hey, let's, let's try to think of a tree name, because Oliver's name kind of derives from olive tree, and we kind of like that in its meaning. So... I couldn't think of any cool tree names. I was like pine tree, you know, oak tree. There's just nothing cool. So I kind of gave up. But kind of it seemed out of the sky, I dropped a name to my husband, and that was Willow. And we really liked that name. So only thing was we didn't know if we were having a girl or a boy because we chose to keep that a surprise. Well, sure enough, May 2014, early Saturday morning, our little girl was born. And so Willow was her name. It was Monday, however, uh, she was almost three days old, Monday evening, 
that we ended up rushing her to the ER. We were at home and Willow started crying and it was a different kind of cry. And within just minutes or maybe two minutes, her cry started to get weak and we knew that was not normal. And we rushed to Forest General Hospital and it was on the way to the ER that um, she was turning cold and I knew that she was dying. And I really was begging God to let her live on the way there. So we get to the ER and, you know, they're asking questions. It's, it's very chaotic and very scary. And um, we end up, they moved her to the NICU at Forest General. And then from there, we ended up at Jackson, Batson's Children's Hospital. And we're so thankful for the people there. But um, we ended up being in Batson's for two months. Um, Willow was diagnosed very quickly with a congenital heart defect called hypoplastic left heart syndrome, or HLHS for short. And we didn't really know what all that meant when we first heard those words, but um, that started a journey for us with her that we're still on today. But it was during that time that, even though it was a very difficult time and we were in the hospital for two months, um, Willow underwent three surgeries while we were there and she fought staph infection actually two separate times. It was a very, very difficult time. But at the same time, it was a time that I've never in my life experienced um, God's presence, like that he was with us so close. And I can truly say that, that God will be there in those dark times because he was there with us. Just a piece of God that didn't make sense, you know. But um, one of the night, we ended up staying at the Ronald McDonald House because we were there for so long, and she was actually in ICU seven weeks, and um, then she moved to a room for one week before we went home. But we were at the Ronald McDonald House, and um, that night I woke up in the middle of the night, and I just started praying. I was like, Lord, I need to hear from you. Now, granted, God had sent people to us. He'd sent ministers. He sent strangers. He had comforted us every step of the way. When we reached those points where we were feeling that we can't go on, God always met us in that time, and um, we would get strength to carry on. But this night, I thanked the Lord. I was like, Lord, I thank you. I know you've spoken. I know you've been there, but I need you again, please, God. So I opened my iPhone Bible, and I clicked on Psalms, and I started to read. And... I quickly got really frustrated because nothing was making sense to me. Um, I just wasn't understanding what I was reading, and it, it wasn't helping at all. And I told God, this isn't helping me. I, I don't get it. It's not speaking to me, and I really, I need you to speak to me. Please, God, I, I need to hear from you. I need to know it's going to be okay. So even in my frustration, I quickly, and this, this all went down in a matter of minutes, but um, I quickly came on a scripture after that because I made the decision, even though I don't understand, I'm going to keep reading anyway. And I almost gave up, but I thank God I didn't because God gave me a word, and it's Isaiah 44, 3 through 5. Turns out I wasn't in the book of Psalms like I thought I had clicked on. God put me in Isaiah, and the, the word that God gave me was, this is the scripture, I will pour out my spirit and my blessing on your children, and they will thrive like willows by the riverbanks. God put my daughter's name in that scripture at my point of need, and he met me there. I have to tell you, there's 31,000 verses in the Bible. Six times is the word willow in the Bible of those 31,000 verses, but only one time is the word willow used as a word picture to describe how God's going to bless your children. So I hope that this encourages you to know when you're going through something, cry out to the Lord and He will answer and He will be with you and He will give you peace. He did it for me and I thank God for it. Well, praise the Lord. Wasn't that powerful? I love testimonies and praise reports to see what God is doing in lives because it just increases our faith to know if God did it for that person, he'll do a miracle for you also. He's still on the throne and he still does miracles. But I do want to pray with you this morning because there's some of you that's watching this show. You feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And you feel like there's no hope. Well, you know what? It's no accident that you're watching because 
you have hope in Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. And if you've never made him the Lord of your life, try Jesus. You've tried everything else. I mean, you've tried everything. I mean, alcohol, drugs, you've tried everything but Jesus and you're afraid of Jesus. Hey, let me tell you what, Jesus loves you. And he's just waiting for you to call on his name. So I want to lead you to Jesus if the Holy Spirit's drawing you in. Also, there's people out there that you are going through some hard times. And you just need some prayer and you need some encouragement. And I want to pray with you also. But right now, if you want to accept Jesus, just pray, pray after me. Say these words. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I believe that you died on the cross just for me and you rose again on the third day and that your blood washes away my sins. Jesus, come into my life. I've done it my way long enough. And from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. And Lord, I just feel like today we are talking to some people that are so discouraged they are fighting depression, they're fighting addictions, they're fighting sickness. Some of them don't even feel like getting out of the bed today. They want to just put the covers over their head and say, I just wish this day would just go on. I, I just don't even feel like living. I rebuke that spirit of suicide over some of you today. Don't you dare do that. God has great plans for you. So right now, Lord, lift, I lift up every person that is watching this show and I speak life over to them. I speak healing. I speak your joy. I speak your peace. Lord, just let them surround them with your love like never before. Show yourself so real in their lives that their life has a purpose and a plan because you've got great plans for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. It's because of you that we're able to stay on the air. And may God bless all of you. And I just want you to know we are praying for you. And if you would be interested in partnering with us, we need to reach more people. Y'all, this world needs Jesus. And we don't have much time left. So let's reach as many people as we can. And if you would help us out, the information is on the screen. Thanks again so much for watching our show. Come join us at one of our conferences. We have a wonderful time and we would love to have you as our guest. But until next week, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus.